Motor Week is made possible by Tire Rack. But first, let's introduce our topless friend here. It's the Alliance Convertible. In its four-door disguise, this car starred in the Rescue of American Motors by Francis Renault. And then for the U.S. market only, AMC's own designers added a two-door to the line. AMC then took that coupe and transformed it into this Alliance Convertible. So to practical and economical, also cheap, we now must add cute. But can the Alliance go topless and still keep its virtuous reputation? It's been over 16 years since American Motors made something this unsensible. But blowing its top and adding wind-in-the-face exposure to the Front Drive Alliance has made it a lot more enjoyable for scooting around in. Unlike many of the 80s convertibles that are transformed by outside suppliers, this one is made in the same AMC Wisconsin factory as the regular hardtop Alliance. At AMC's credit, they consulted the Southgate, Michigan firm of ASC, the main converter for General Motors and others, to make sure the design was done right, or pretty much so. The top is fully electric and very tightly constructed. It goes up or down in a flash for quick protection from a sudden shower. The boot cover uses snaps and requires about the same amount of struggle to attach as others of this style. But in order to add strength to the car's unibody, the windshield frame had to be beefed up way beyond a horsey size. And some stylists saw fit to black out part of the top side panel to try and reduce the look of its bulky shape. All convertibles involve some compromises, but where it counts, the Alliance is well done. Long for its compact class, the 97.8-inch wheelbase means that enough rear seat room could be left for two adults in back as long as they're close friends. And the Alliance pedestal front seat design continues as standard, which also helps rear seat foot room. With two trim levels, L and DL, just about every option you could order on the sedan models is available here, including this system sentry fluid monitoring pod. The only controls we find hard to reach, as in a lot of cars of European heritage, is the radio. It's tucked down and in front of the gear shift. The other common convertible compromise is trunk space. Here the Alliance cutout is expectedly short with a high sill. Soft bags for soft tops are not a bad idea. One of the best features of the Alliance convertible is the standard enlarged 1.7 liter four cylinder. With throttle body fuel injection, it's 78 horsepower. That's 23 more than the sedan's base 1.4 liter. Helps overcome the convertible's 180 extra pounds of weight but that still means there's 2,400 pounds to pull around. Most orders will include our car's three-speed automatic and not the standard five-speed manual transaxle. So the Alliance convertible will be hard pressed to give you wind burn. Over our quarter mile course, it took a long 20.5 seconds and got to only 68 miles per hour with an equally slow time of 16.8 seconds from zero to 60. However, power does seem to be somewhat more available where you need it every day. Our 500-foot on-ramp run yielded an acceptable time of 10.7 seconds, but at a low 48. Back on the slow side, too, is 7.7 .7 seconds to pass from 40 to 55 miles per hour. Highway handling is another alliance function that will seem much better on the open road than on a test strip. With small tires and soft springs, this Alliance still takes tight turns like a ship in heavy seas. The French nature of the Alliance gets pretty obvious here. Yet on irregular pavement, the Alliance is probably one of the best riding compacts you can buy. Most cars in its class are extremely tiring on long trips. The Alliance can be driven well into the sunset and beyond. Back roads also test the construction of any convertible. Now, we felt more body flex than expected, but there were no squeaks or rattles. And that was in a press car that had been extensively used and abused before it was dropped by our door. Another friendly feature on alliances that also held true for this convertible were brakes. Stops were straight, without serious lockup, and the pedal was firm. 
the disc drum system did exhibit quite a bit of fade after six tries. But overall, we judge a 111-foot average from 55 as very, very short. With little wind noise and a most unconvertible like 70 decibels of sound at 55, this alliance also proved quite good on fuel. 22 city and 26 highway are its EPA ratings, and we managed 24 on our urban mileage loop. So okay, the Alliance convertible is still economical, practical for a small family, and by most accounts, cute. But is it still inexpensive, or is it like other convertibles, purely a treat? Well, it is more costly than other Alliance models, but it's frivolous only to the tune of $10,295 to start and $12,350 with the near full equipment of our test car. That's over a grand less than the nearest competitor, making the Alliance the least expensive ragtop fun you can buy. So yes, the Alliance convertible does wear its two faces quite well. Despite a few flaws in execution, it's a good example of how to add trendy domestic ingenuity to a sound foreign design, and at a very fair cost. And it really is cute.